<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Just like to uh, welcome members to the 11th meeting of the <coughs> Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. And I uh, would ask members to turn off their mobile phones and Blackberries. And apologies have been received from Dave Thompson and Cameron Buchanan. And item one uh, on the agenda today is a declaration of interest. And um, is, this will enable the new members of the committee to declare any relevant interests. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mark. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Margaret McCulloch to the committee and invite her to. A minute ago, sorry, <laughs> that's a bad start. <laughs> to invite you to declare any interest, Margaret. Right, um, thanks for that, convener. I don't have any relevant uh, interests that would conflict with this committee. Thank you very much. And as a substitute member to the committee, Colin, I'd like to welcome you this morning in place of um, Dave Thompson, who can't be with us today, and invite you to declare any interests as well. Thank you for your welcome, and I have no uh, interest to declare. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank, take this opportunity to thank uh, Margaret uh, McCulloch <laughs> for her uh, time uh, serving on this committee. I'm sure the a good, valuable colleague and always had insightful comments to make and so we're very grateful to her and like to place a, a record of appreciation uh, to her for her time being here. <coughs> if we can move on then to agenda item two today um, and that agenda item is to ask uh, members if they will agree to take agenda item uh, six uh, Sorry, is to, is to ask them to agree to take items six, seven, eight, and nine in private. And are members agreed for that? Thank you. And um, because agenda item six is for the committee to consider its uh, draft work programme, and agenda item seven is for the committee to consider the responses uh, the committee received for the members' interest consultation. And agenda item eight is for the committee to consider issues for its report and its inquiry into post-legislative -legis scrutiny. And agenda item nine is for the committee to consider draft standing order rule changes in relation to the presiding officer and deputy presiding officer elections. So thank you very much for that, colleagues. And uh, our third item on the uh, agenda um, item uh, today is for the committee to agree to take the following items in private at future meetings and that's the policy papers on the Members Interests Act and the approach papers on the committee's inquiries into the uh, European scrutiny and hybrid bills and draft reports on committee substitutes and the presiding officer and deputy presiding officer elections. And do members agree to take yeah. these items in private at future meetings? Yeah. Thank you. And if we turn now to agenda item four, uh, cross-party groups. And next item on the agenda is uh, for the committee to take evidence from Jean Urquhart on the proposed cross-party groups and adult learning and Malcolm Chisholm, MSP, on the proposed cross-party group on rare disease. And I'd like to welcome Jean Urquhart to the meeting this morning. Thank you for being with us today. Jean, we're very grateful to you. And I'd like to uh, invite uh, any members uh, round the table if they have got any questions for Jean. Fiona. Um, a very comprehensive um, form. Thank you very much for giving us lots and lots of information. Um, I note that you talk about um, the Scot Scotland's Learning Partnership providing £1,000 to support um, allowing adult learners to get here, which I think is great. But you also say that they're providing the Secretariat and I wonder why you haven't ascribed a material benefit to under that heading. That's a good question that I'm not sure that I can answer that. I suppose we, could, we should do that. Um, I'm just recently aware of, of the implications of, of any financial implication of a cross-party working group, so I guess that's something that we would have to agree to. So could you get that. Scotland's Learning Partnership to ascribe how much in benefit you're getting from that? Very happy to do that. 
Thank you very much. Anyone else with any questions? I think you're getting let off very easily this morning, Jean. <laughs> um, if there are no other questions for Jean, I'd just like to thank you very much for being here, ready and prepared to ask, uh, answer any questions. And uh, the committee will decide whether to accord recognition to the group later in the meeting. And so I'd like to just thank you and excuse you from the meeting now, Jean. And that will allow, um, if I could just suspend for a moment, uh, gives Jean a, a chance to leave the table and Malcolm Chisholm to sit at the table. Morning, Malcolm. I'd like to uh, welcome you as well to the meeting and thank you for being here to answer questions. And again, I'd like to invite any of my colleagues uh, on this side of the table if they have any questions for Malcolm and his cross party group this morning. Uh, yes, Fiona again, Fiona McLeod. Thank you, Convener. I have a few questions, um, Mr. Chisholm, for me. Um, we're very conscious that um, we have a lot of health-related cross-party groups and as a committee we're trying to ask new groups if they can say why they think that they have to be standalone and, and not join another group. So I think it would be interesting to hear an explanation. Well, I'm certainly very conscious of the fact that there are um, several health cross-party groups. I know your own convener at the top there's convener of one of them i'm convener of three other ones health inequalities cancer and mental health and certainly from my own experience of those and other health across party groups over the years i don't think i can recall one meeting which has focused on the subject of rare diseases so it, i mean sometimes rare drugs are called orphan drugs so it's it, it's like a group of conditions that are often forgotten about in health policy and that uh, is also reflected i think in the agendas of cross-party groups, but I think it's particularly relevant at this time when an EU um, uh, directive insists that the UK has a plan for rare diseases, so currently that's being formulated th this very calendar year. And also, of course, it's come very much to the fore with all the debates around um, availability of drugs and there are particular issues around orphan drugs. So I think, I think there would always be a place for a cross-party group on rare diseases, but I think it's particularly appropriate at this time. Thank you. Um, well, one of the other things I noticed is in the proposed group, you've got a list of the MSPs yeah, who are supporting uh, it and the organisations, yeah, uh, but as yet no individual members. Have you decided that you don't want individual members or are, are you not at the position uh, to invite? No, we certainly haven't decided that. No, it's just in terms of the formation of the group. I know a lot of the organisations were keen to be to be members. So no, we'll certainly. I'm sure there will be individual members as well, although some of them will be associated anyway with those organisations. Many people who yeah. actually suffer from those diseases will be will be members or associated with those particular organisations. Okay, thank you. One final one. Yes, certainly. Thank you. The same as I asked Jean Urquhart. Um, can, can you um, show how the Rare Diseases UK providing the Secretariat support put a financial... Yeah, I mean, I think it's very difficult to, um, for many, obviously many people who provide the Secretariat across party groups are uh, voluntary organisations working in the field. So, I mean, they regard it as part of their work, understandably, to, uh, to um, engage with MSPs. So I, I, I have asked that question and... Uh, Natalie Frankish, who is um, the, the worker for Rare Disease UK and will in effect be the secretary of the groups for Rare Disease UK, says that um, she would say it would be two days a month. But So I don't know whether she can translate that into, if that's what you want, into a financial benefit. But that's what she's told me when I asked that question. Mm -hmm. As with the last cross-party group that we talked about with Gina, it would be so. How does that work? For us. Does, that, does that mean that you just have to take one fifteenth of her salary? I, I don't quite know what's expected on this. I, I find this quite a difficult question. Is that, that's is that what, what, uh, my understanding uh -huh. is that's what most organisations do when they've worked out that it would be two days per month. Uh -huh. They then say, "Well, what do we pay that person two days per month?" And that goes as your ma material benefit. Well, if that's what's required, that's what's required. Although it does rather make public what she earns, but if that's what it has to be, then fine. Yeah.
Do you imagine, it, you don't only look at that aspect, I mean, you would look at any aspect of postages and things that the organisation might yeah, provide well, to, that's to that's that's right. and, mm. and stationery mm. and, you know, any mm. other add-ons that you would have in organising mm. a meeting, because those are things mm. that the Parliament doesn't provide for, so someone has to provide for them, and, and it's going and, to cost I, I know someone. I'm, I know I'm not supposed to ask you questions, but can I ask what the thinking of the group is in relation to requiring a financial sum to be attached to that? Um, well, I mean, we, we have a policy in, in the um, committee that there should be a sum assigned, but I can see it at the corner of my hand going up at the same time. And I, I, I think so, so you can, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, when it started, it wasn't a, a sort of suggested, but now that there's a template, it was laid down by Margaret McCulloch uh, when she started her cross party group. Uh, I don't think you have to detail, uh, you know, exactly what somebody earns. I, I think you have to put down what it would cost to run the group, uh, you know, it's like a thousand pound a year or whatever. That's what? a different, well, like, I think we need clarification on this because it's one thing just to add up the, um, the materials that are required, but obviously that would come to a relatively small sum of money, but obviously if you're taking whatever it is, um, a fifteenth of somebody's salary, then that is a much larger sum, so perhaps it would be good if we had some clarification on exactly what is required. Perhaps I could ask the clerks um, to write to you so, yeah, so you could have yeah, the absolute no, okay. clarification um, because I mean, my understanding um, is it would involve things like the hospitality for teas and coffees yeah, and things yeah, as okay, well. Yeah, mm, um, but mm, I'm sure the committee clerks will be right, okay. most helpful mm, in that mm, regard. So we'll, uh, we will send that on to you. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions, members? Well, again, I'd just like to say thank you, Malcolm, for your attendance this morning and the committee will decide uh, whether to accord recognition to the group later in the meeting today. And um, So you'll then be notified. And I mean, the fact that there's answers being awaited to these questions can't preempt what my colleagues will say, but I would imagine that that won't um, cause a problem. But we'll, we'll get to that point later on. But thank you very much for coming this morning. If we can then move on to agenda item five, and agenda item five is for the committee to discuss the evidence heard from Jean Urquhart, MSP, on the proposed cross-party group on adult learning, and Malcolm Chisholm on the proposed cross-party group on rare diseases, and I'd like to invite colleagues. Uh, Richard, would you like to start? Uh, can I seek clarification in regards to whether I can take part in the decision on regards to rare diseases and actually see that George Adam is down for the adult, adult learning. Uh, as we have signed up to be a member of these cross-party groups, uh, would it be better not to take part in the, the decision? I'll just get some advice from our clerks. Um, it, it's a matter for members to decide. There, there isn't a rule on it, so it's whatever you feel is appropriate. I'm quite happy to decide that. <laughs> OK, do, do any other members... Um, have any questions or comments that they would like to make? Um, or do you just simply want to uh, agree to accord recognition to the cross-party group, first of all, on adult learning? Are members content to agree recognition? I, I believe that, uh, you know, I think it was. I haven't signed up for that particular cross-party group. I think it's a, a group which is, is required. And I would certainly agree with the... the um, Send, you know, to, to pass this application. Yeah, all members in agree? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's excellent. So we agree that that particular cross-party group be given recognition. And can I put the same question to you with regard to uh, the rare diseases cross-party group? And I invite you to say whether you agree or not. Fiona? I have a slight reservation on this one. And when Malcolm Chisholm was explaining it, it's, it seems very much focused on a current event that is going to last about a year. Um, but that, that would be my only reservation, that it's a cross-party group with perhaps too narrow, a very specific purpose, which I think is not what we're trying to encourage, but, but it may grow. Well, it, it could also be the fact that it might just be a finite um, term uh, working group and that's maybe something the Parliament would want to encourage as well because that would help to reduce the number uh, of cross-party groups if there is um, you know, a, a light at the end of the tunnel that seems to be uh, that there's no longer a requirement for it. So perhaps um, when we write to Malcolm Chisholm, um, 
from give him clarification, uh, or rather ask uh, him for clarification on the issues. Um, we can also just um, raise that question. But in the meantime, are members content to give approval in principle? I see heads nodding. So um, we'll agree then that we will give um, recognition. And But it will be interesting to if we could just have feedback to the committee on these particular points uh, that we're uh, raising uh, with the Rare Diseases Cross Party Group. I think it would be educational for members as well, so that we're clear uh, when we're asking um, these uh, questions in public. So that ends the public part of the meeting. And we'll... Just before we move on, may I make a general comment on yes, um, the applications and, and the comments received from the applicants? The financial benefit or other benefits, I think, is quite clear on our form. But I know that somewhere in our work programme we are looking at providing guidance to go with these application forms. Um, I think it will be interesting for us to look at that guidance and because I thought it, our form was quite clear yes. about the, you know, for example, material assistance such as secretariat support. That shouldn't have caused, I wouldn't have thought that would have caused the problem it did today. No, no I, I wouldn't have thought either, but um, there we are. Um, that ends the public part of the meeting then, and we'll move into the private session and allow any press or public um, <laughs> to leave the meeting. Thank you very much.